Hey guys, Rachel from Green Zebra Markets here. So, I'm pretty bummed out after what happened today. Is I'm still pretty much in shock. I don't even know what to think, what would possess somebody to do something like that. Like how someone can do something like that to other people. If she's stolen from me, then... She's probably stolen from a lot of people, a lot of which are homeless. So it's just pretty shitty all around. So I'm sitting here, kind of in the aftermath <laughs> of just a pretty terrible day. It started out really great. We saw a lot of our regular customers at the downtown east side market today. And... We're chatting with the market staff and the other vendors, and it was a busier day than last week. And, you know, we knew what happened last week. A lady tried to steal her cash box. She was literally like one foot away from me and zipped the back of the tent, tried to sneak in and run off with it, but I saw her in the progress of doing it, ran after her, got it back, and apparently she was bragging to folks in downtown east side about how she was going to try again and how she was going to get my cash box this week i chatted to a lot of people like we searched like i searched for over an hour like at first with the police but then i mean they weren't really doing much so i went off on my own with the two volunteers we had today liz and, and lisa um gar guarding the rest of the market supplies and everything and chatting with everybody on the street, everyone that would and could talk to me, trying to see if they had seen a lady that had matched his description and, um, you know, it, I had leads, like people say, oh, you know, she just went that way, like she just turned left there. I always seem to be a block or two behind her. I can never catch up. I mean, I did all I could and I was trying to use that Find My iPhone app for the iPad, but it only works if it's connected to the internet. But if I got close enough, the personal hotspot on my phone would have turned it on. But, I mean, if she's done this before, which I'm sure she has, then she would have completely powered off the iPad. So I guess that wouldn't have worked, but it was a shot, so I took it anyways. But, but anyways, I don't know. I just couldn't find it, obviously. Um, she probably sold it, the iPad within the first 10 minutes and then, you know, the cash, like, that's pretty quick to spend, I guess. So, I mean, maybe we'll hear something. She's got a pretty big mouth, apparently, so she's probably bragging to everyone that will listen about what she did. Apparently, she, she doesn't have many friends. Like, a lot of people hate her, basically, because she's stolen from them in the past, so... They're keeping an eye out for me, and they're going to try all they can to get it back. But, I mean, it's kind of hopeless at this point. Um, but I'm, I'm just sitting here and trying to think about the good that we've done there. We've been at the downtown east side market since August now. And every new market location we go to, I kind of gain a new perspective made a whole new group of people. So one of the first people I met downtown, his name is Mark. He um, is one of the market volunteers and he vo also volunteers at one of the downtown urban farms as well. And so, yeah, he, he and I became friends. I see him every week. Every week, even if he's not working at the market, he always stops by and greets me with a smile and asks how I'm doing. And, you know, I heard about, a bit about his, his story and how hard his life has been. And I've heard many other similar stories. And, you know, I've had people that say, you guys are crazy. Like, what? You're so out of place. Why are you down here? Like, what's the point? And, I mean... Just because something is hard, are you just not going to try? You know, that, that was always my attitude and the attitude that I think our volunteers who are so loyal and supporting us shared, right? That's why they kept coming back week after week. We have some volunteers who for nearly a year now have been coming 
pretty much every single week. Like it's just pretty crazy how dedicated they they have been to this project. And um, you know, people would say, "Oh, you must do pretty well here." It's like, well, you know, we none of us make any money off of this. Everybody's a volunteer, including me. Like I work more than full time hours on this. I don't. I haven't been able to um, get enough funds into the market to take any kind of wage yet. Uh, it's been nearly two years, still no wage, <laughs> still trying to like shoot for the dream, right? Make this into a career, like it's kind of really been an integral part of my life journey so far. Anyways, we've we've been down there and. Um, We've had our ups and downs, and we've had our hecklers, and we've had our fervent supporters, and and people who I think have we've convinced to to support us and to support the street market in general, which which has been rewarding. And you know, I'm one of, one of my friends and also our volunteers, Carlene. You know, I was kind of chatting with her about this a little bit online, and I'm saying, well. You know, at, the, at this point, I really don't see how we can go back there if this lady stole from us. What's to stop her from just trying every single week? I mean, every sec, it, it just, it's incredibly quick. You turn your back for even five seconds. I mean, she was obviously stalking us. Like, she was watching and waiting for the exact right moment. And she's just like so quick and she lives nearby. We know where she lives. She lives in Blood Alley, which is a nearby um, SRO in the downtown east side. After chatting with multiple, multiple people, which the police weren't even doing, and I was taking the initiative and doing, found out like where she lived. Nobody knows her name, unfortunately, probably because they hate her guts, but that's another story. Um, so... So yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's a point. I don't know if I'm still kind of just in shock and just kind of being reactionary, like knee-jerk reaction. Like I'm never going back there. Like, you know, I'm so hurt and this is so ridiculous. And this is this huge, huge setback to us when we're really just always just struggling to to keep going, even just to pay the market bills. Never, no, never mind. Maybe able to to take a wage for for all the time that I put into this, but. Yes, I don't know at this point. I mean, please feel free to, to comment and let me know what you think, whether you think I should go back or what I should do. Like, I mean, my brain's not even working right now. I'm just kind of at a loss. And I mean, <laughs> right now, I'm just kind of focused on the only consolation that I have right now. And that is basically this huge bowl of chocolate ice cream with berries from our market. <laughs> raspberries and strawberries from from farmer bell in abbotsford um chocolate ice cream briar's chocolate ice cream is pretty much my guilty pleasure and so we've got the berries from our market on there so i'm gonna just kind of like soothe my wounded soul i guess with with this it's pretty much all i can do at this point i'm just like <laughs> you know What's the point in crying? It's not gonna help anything. So I, ice cream is much more productive. <laughs> um. But anyways, no matter what happens, I want to thank all of our loyal, loyal, awesome, amazing volunteers for all the help that they have given to this market and to our other market locations, and to thank all the wonderful people that I met there, the market staff, the market coordinators, all the other vendors, all the community members. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that this has turned out this way at this moment, but you know, it's, it has been a, a blessing to, to get to meet you and to know you. Um, so that's it for now, for, for now. And, um, I know that a lot of people are, are struggling, but it, it, it doesn't matter even if you um, can't afford to support us on GoFundMe, then it, it really does help a lot to, to share it with your friends and to, to spread the word because um, our page doesn't get a huge amount of reach. But if you share it, and then if one of your friends shares it, then you'd be surprised how exponentially fast that that can just kind of like explode and, and get to people like even people who haven't heard about our market but are interested in food security hopefully they might 
um, be willing to to think about uh, supporting us or at least you know chatting with us, go, visiting one of our other market locations, and like that's the other thing too. Like if you live near the Marpo or Musqueam locations, like every every purchase matters, even if it's just like a pear or an apple or whatever. Like it supports us and it supports the local farmers, so it's win win, right? And um, you know if you have a friend's like birthday or whatever coming up like we do have like a lot of amazing gift options so that's also a way to to help us out like uh raw honey is amazing and so is our local jam and you know even chat with chat with me like i worked in um, retail for a number of years even before this and so i can put together like a wicked gift basket for you um you can also purchase uh gift cards um from our website or in person it's a little cheaper you save the PayPal fee um, so that uh, you can even just like gift that to a friend or give it to someone you know in the community who, who would need it who could use some more fresh food in their life um, but thanks friends and thanks for watching stay in touch I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch again soon